Are you preparing for a certification exam, but don't know where to start? Don't know how to study or, or what you should be doing? Well, stay tuned and I'll give you some tips. One question that I get asked a lot is, how should I prepare for a certification exam? And sadly, the answer is it's different for everybody. Everybody has different needs. So I can't tell you exactly, here's what you need to do to guarantee success. But what I can do is give you some tips, some suggestions, things that have worked for other people, and especially things that have worked for me. And then you can take that and pick it apart to what works for you to come up with a winning solution. So let's run through a couple of things that you need to do to get ready for an exam. The first thing you need to do is figure out what materials you're going to use. You need to learn and you've got to learn from somewhere. Well, different people learn different ways. Some people are visual learners. Some people are auditory learners. Others require direct instruction from a living human being like you would have in a classroom. Other people are perfectly fine reading a book. Only you know what works for you as far as the way that you're capable of learning. But what is going to really make a difference is if you purchase training materials that are in the format that works for you. If you're a visual learner or even an auditory learner, services like IT Pro TV can really work and help you to learn. But if you're a book learner and you buy a video, well, that's not really going to help you. That's not the way you learn. It's going to slow you down and take it longer for you to retain some of the topics that you're studying. So make sure you're buying the appropriate materials for your preferred method of study. That's going to be a real key to success. And don't go crazy. Some people, when they get started, they buy everything they can. They say, all right, I want to get my CCNA. So I'm going to buy CCNA videos and books and practice exams and all, all these different crazy things. Well, only buy the ones that actually match up with your style of learning because those are the ones you're really going to use and the others just end up being a waste of money. So always focus in on that. Second, you've got to set a schedule. You have to create a plan that sets aside time for you to get in and actually study. We, uh, we have a saying around here that sometimes life happens. We plan on doing a certification, but the car breaks down. Or we have a kid, we get a new job, we have to go back to college. Things like these happen, right? It's part of life. And they all can serve as a way to derail you from your certification goal. So it's really important that you set aside time. You treat it kind of like a second job because it, it basically is. You are preparing for this exam. One method that I use is when I'm studying for an exam, on the weekdays, I set aside one hour a day, one hour a day every weekday to study for that exam. And then I take Saturday and I treat it like I have a job. I set aside eight hours. I'm gonna spend eight hours studying for that exam on Saturday. And on Sunday, I'm not gonna study at all. It's my day off. I'm gonna relax, think about other things. Then on Monday, I go back to work and I set aside that one hour in the evening to study again. That gives me a good window of time, about, uh, uh, what does that work out to? It's, uh, <laughs> it's uh, 13 hours of study time every single week. And with that pace, you can get certified pretty quickly. But maybe you don't have that kind of time. Maybe you can only set aside one or two hours a week. That's fine, but you have to accept the fact that it may take many months for you to get ready for that exam. Set the schedule. It's gonna help you set expectations for when you can pass and it's gonna help you stay true to it to ensure, am I doing enough to get ready? Am I studying enough? And am I going to be ready when I take that exam? All right, next, take a practice exam. You can take a practice exam whenever you want. You can take it on day one of your study schedule because a practice exam is a great way to show you the areas you're weak in. You might find that you're doing great in some topics and absolutely totally failing in other ones. Well, guess which topics you need to spend more time on? The ones you're failing, right? You don't know which ones you're weak on until you take that practice test. So definitely take a practice exam. That's gonna tell you where you can make the best effort, put the most work into to get the most return. Really important. And then you're gonna take practice exams other times. So you're gonna see this one here in just a moment as well. All right, so after that, we need to reinforce our weak areas. Any area that we're not an expert in, any area that we couldn't describe to our parents that is something we need to learn more about, right? So those are the areas you need to focus your study efforts on. Don't try and study 100% of the exam objectives. There may be some things that you're already good on. Don't waste time on that. You're already good there. Focus on the things that you're uncomfortable with, that you're not strong in, right? And then take another practice exam, right? Use the practice exam as a way to measure your skills and your learning. Are you retaining the information that you read? If I just watched five hours of video content and read three chapters in a book, I may have been distracted. I may have had a separate window open. I might've been doing work while it happened. And, and while I did watch five hours of video, I didn't retain anything. 
or I did read three chapters of the book, but I just didn't retain it. The practice exam is what will show whether or not that's happening, right? Now, at the same time, leverage other tools if you can, things like hands-on learning. If you're learning Cisco routers, try and get a hold of a Cisco router. That way you can get some hands-on experience working on it. Hands-on experience can be a little bit rough though because sometimes it's easy to get distracted. You end up spending a lot of time focused on something like just installing Ubuntu Linux and not actually learning about the operating system itself beyond the installation process. So you wanna make sure that you're really getting your, your money's worth out of hands-on experience. And that's where things like virtual labs come in handy. Virtual labs dump you right into the moment where you need to be to start learning a particular topic without all the extraneous stuff around it that kind of serves as a distraction. So you wanna make sure you use hands-on type labs that are specifically built around your certification if you can. And then once you've taken the practice test again, you're getting good scores, you show that you've retained the information, you're feeling confident about the exam objectives, that's when you're ready to go and take the real exam. And when you go and take the real exam, what you'll find in a lot of cases is that the practice exams were harder than the real exams. And that if you were scoring well on those practice exams, that you then go in and the real exam is, is a breeze. You walk right through it. But if you don't, in the event that you don't pass the exam, don't get discouraged. You need to just study again. They the actual exam will give you a performance readout at the end that'll show the areas you were weak in. Again, it's telling you the areas you need to study. And then go and take it again. Now, a little word of advice here. If you don't pass the exam on the first try, you need to keep working. Don't stop. Don't get discouraged and say, I'm going to take a month off. Because in that month off, you start to lose some of the information you've learned. You're going backwards in your learning. And you've got to kind of make up that ground again to get exam ready. And that's where a lot of people drop off and they don't go back for that second try. But if you, you know, keep that forward momentum, keep studying, keep reinforcing the areas you're weak, that's where you're going to learn. That's when you're going to get ready and you'll go back in and pass that exam on the second try. So, you know, definitely don't get discouraged. All right. Now, I've thrown out a lot of tips, a lot of advice here. The number one, if I had to pick any one of these things as the most important, it's set a schedule. You've got to set a schedule for your study time and hold to it. If you don't study, you're not likely to pass. Some people get lucky. Some people just naturally are good at test taking. Most of us aren't. So set aside the time, make sure you study. There's really no substitute for just dedicated study and focus. So you've got to do that. All right, well, hopefully you found something of value in all of this and identified ways that this advice might apply to you personally and your learning styles. Uh, if you wanna take advantage of some of the things I talk about, things like video learning, practice labs, practice exams. These are all things that are a part of an IT Pro TV subscription. So jump over to itpro.tv, our website, and see what we have available and see how that might help you attain your certification goals.